good kitten internet. Hi. Okay, I need to wait. With this. <laughs> <laughs> so for reference, I don't have the camera. Uh, I have the camera mirrored. So this is my right hand for reference, even though it's appearing as left on the screen. Um, it's throwing off creator a bit. Yeah, I'm. I only have one standard size monitor at home, so I don't get to see myself when I record. <laughs> well, not to mention you're not using your camera. Right, right I'm now. not even using face cam oh. now because right. while I have a green screen, I don't have sufficient lighting to utilize Whereas, it. Whereas I'm using one IKEA light to light this. <laughs> <laughs> like the, their cheapest light. I don't understand how it works out really well for some reason. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, for those that may not be familiar, this is Creator, my partner, and we are legally wedded and everything. Yeah, like five days ago. Exactly. Uh, we just came back from Norway from a horrible trip that um, I will probably already ranted about. So exhausting. But... Um, Part of the trip, we were playing Alpha Centauri together, so we're going to play Alpha Centauri. Not to, well, together as in both of us are on camera talking at the same time, not as in a multiplayer game. Although I guess we could have done that. You but... just steamroll me. You you would have to play on Transcend and me on Talent. Yeah, probably. Anyway, let's go ahead and start playing. So, um, in the last video, I had introduced you all to both the Alien Crossfire factions along with the Second Mission factions. We are going to be playing an Alien Crossfire faction today. Specifically, we're going to be playing as the Caretakers. Let's go ahead and go through the start things. Um, do you ever play with Map of Planet, by the way? I think I did it a couple of times way back in the beginning. Okay. I don't remember what Map of Planet looks like. <laughs> it's been so long. Yeah, that's fair. And you usually play as large or huge, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with huge this time for reference. Um, I think my last game I actually did very huge. Yeah. With very huge, you have like huge areas that just aren't colonized by anyone. Mm-hmm. Because it's so big. Which is nice. Yeah, and, and when you have mag tubes, you... You could just dedicate a quarter of planet to be a nature preserve. Yeah, you could. So should I go with very huge instead then? I think huge is sufficient. Okay. Um, so last game, I believe I had actually done 70 to 90% of the surface as water. Uh, this time I'm planning on 50 to 70 instead. Mm. I want slightly larger land masses other than what Lol had. <laughs> Damn it, lol. Yeah, I often play with very little ocean because I like building mag tubes everywhere. And having everything connected is kind of nice, except not when you start right next to a hostile faction. Which is why I usually don't like playing on low amounts of water. Because I always end up next to the worst possible faction for me to start as, regardless of what set of factions are in there. Yeah, like the recent game I had where I... Um, Ended up right in the middle of the two alien factions. Yeah. Like, um, can I just stay out of it? Why? You were stuck in an alien crossfire. Yes. Yes, I was. <laughs> um, erosive forces. I usually tend towards strong, personally. Although average is fine as well. Weak cause problems. Yeah, I think I tried playing on weak recently and... Doesn't it just mean that the planet needs more terraforming? Yes. Everything's rocky. Mm-hmm. Just, no. I mean, with strong, you don't have as high terrain. So mm. solar collectors aren't quite as good. But... I would go with average, probably. That sounds good. Um, in this case, I actually am playing as a faction that's going to take advantage of abundant native life forms. So I'm going to choose abundant native life forms. And cloud cover. So dense means rainy. Yep. This is purely a scale of do you want it dry or rainy. Uh, in the original version of Smack, you would actually see the background. I of, remember that. Yep. Change. That is unfortunately something that they removed in some one of the unofficial patches. There was a glitch with it. Mm. 
I don't remember what the glitch was, but I remember that there was a glitch with it. I'm going dense because... You, it... you like fertile land. Yes. And this also gives an advantage to the AI. So it's not really a, hey, look, I'm going to choose this because it's better for me. Mm. If anything, sparse would be better for me for foresting everything. And as I had mentioned before, uh, since I am playing using the Thinker mod, I will be playing on Thinker difficulty. Lately in our in my recent games, I've been playing on Librarian, and uh, the I th was I playing on Librarian or Talent for my last series? I think I was playing on Talent, wasn't I? Yeah, I think so. And you absolutely curb something. Yeah, on Talent. That's because I was trying to get used to the game again. But we're going to be playing Thinker difficulty on Thinker mod, so I'm going to be a lot worse than I was. Thinker mod is hard. <laughs> Now, I think we have basically the same general rules that we play as for the custom game rules, right? Mostly, yeah. Um, these are the rules that I did the last game. I often play with text stagnation, but... I just wish you could adjust it where it stagnates near the end, because in the end you just get tech after tech after tech, and I don't have time to build my network of mag tubes before the game is over. Yeah, I mean, the Thinkerbot sort of does that, since it increases the amount of tech costs based off mm -hmm. of the level of technology, but not by enough. <laughs> it really only affects you early to mid-game. Yeah, I've only recently begun using the Thinker mod and with lighter settings. <laughs> yeah, um, we're even using the Thinker mod in our multiplayer game right now, which has been interesting. Um, so as previously mentioned, uh, this is just a random selection. We are going to be using these, and we're going to be playing as the Manifold Caretakers. Um, one thing that you can do that I actually didn't mention the last time, but what reminded me was Creator doing this, is changing the order of this so you go first. So you win more off the achievements. Yes. Which I'm totally going to do. Uh, cyborgs. There. Caretakers there. There we go. <laughs> so as a quick reminder, the caretakers get a whole bunch of technology, but they cannot transcend, they cannot win using a UN victory, and they cannot win using an economic victory, if I remember correctly. Um, the economic victory, I'm not sure about. I need to actually try it. Mm. But instead, they get a their own unique victory, which is what I'm going to be going for this game. Of course. I might accidentally conquer the world, though. I might, yeah, I've also accidentally conquered the world. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> yep. Um, something to take notice on is this line here that all prototyped combat units have two square sighting radius. I completely forgot about that in our multiplayer game because we're both playing as um, the yeah, uh, alien factions. <laughs> he was playing the um, usurpers and I was playing the caretakers. And we just decided to just not do any hostile action against each other and see who could ally with the most human factions and get them to fight each other. To be fair, I'm allied, I was allied with the most human factions by virtue of them all submitting to me. Yeah. <laughs> and you have the bigger military. That's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm still not sure how that happened. It's not like my military is small. No. Anyway, so playing as the caretakers means that we're going to start with a bonus to planet. So as I've described earlier, that means that the first mind worm that we encounter will be able to capture automatically at a 100% chance. And beyond that, it's a 25% chance for capturing mind worms, assuming we don't have anything increasing planet, which we will. Um, also, I noticed in our multiplayer game, the physical stand of, scan of planet surface didn't work. The free one that we get here. Hmm. Anyway. How city flowering. Horrors You're going to have to tell me when they stop talking. Must never be repeated. Therefore, if it means the end of our evolution as a species, so be it. Caretaker Luna, sacrifice life. Okay. Uh, so for reference, they're actually the ones with the headset yeah. this time and not me. 
they're also using the headset for the first time. I like it. Oh, uh, for games and things like that, it is excellent. Uh, although, fair warning, it's connected to both my computer and my phone. Fun. And the phone will take precedence over the computer. So if I get an f- incoming phone call, it will interrupt. But they won't hear my phone. Okay, I, w- I will just yell if I get a- if you get a phone call. Please don't yell too loud. I'm right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> also, the phone's right in front of me. Okay. Before we get into the game, I wanted to go over the th- changes that I've made to the Thinker mod to make it less awful. Um, so, technically, we've actually finished recording the first video at this point, so have fun with the time travel editor, me. Anyway, um, so what you see over on the screen right now is the Thinker mod INI file. This is where all of the game settings are for Thinker mod, and... What you don't see off the side of the screen is that I used an online diffing program to figure out the differences, the changes that I made, just so I don't have to try to remember. Anyway, um, a lot of these settings are the same settings that you would find in the alphacentauri.ini file. When you're running thinker.exe, it ignores everything in alphacentauri.ini. It just uses this instead. So, like, a lot of these are the standard stuff that you would find, like disabling the opening movie and stuff like that. Um. The first change that I made is actually, well, I'm not counting these as changes. That's just me making it the correct screen aspect ratio for my setup. Um, The first actual change is much further down here, but I'm going to quickly go over what some of the things that you can do would be. For instance, this line here allows you to see what faction um, owns a probe team. In normal Alpha Centauri, you can't tell at a quick glance because it removes the flag but if you click on the unit it tells you anyway they couldn't remove that part from the game so they just went well if you can already tell you might as well just add the flag back um there'll also be pop-ups for like changes in foreign treaties and so on um the new base names is an interesting thing that you discovered the new base names can can be hilarious (laughs) and sometimes are just repetitive I think the repetitive might just be because you enabled it part of the way through the yeah. game. Yeah, they, uh, they feel like they're randomly generated, but mm-hmm. I don't think they actually are. It's just an expanded list of names. I think what it is is that it is randomly generating them, but it's generating them from words that, like, mm-hmm. from a keyword list, basically, and just applying keywords together, kind of like mission names in XCOM. <laughs> Um, other things, this smooth scrolling would work great if I wasn't already running PracX, which uses smooth scrolling. Uh, they do conflict with each other. This is actually the feature that allows you to use the zoom level with the mouse wheel. And I think this might be the reason why it's inconsistently working. Mm-hmm. Because PracX is fighting thinker mud. Uh, it does a couple of other things as well. Um... Like, for instance, you can drag the map window around using the right mouse button. Um, It also lets you get a couple of extra terrain views when you hit the T button. Anyway, um, this line is for what's the area that you want the mouse over by the edge to start scrolling automatically. It's nice to be able to tweak. If you want to play Alpha Centauri inside of Thinker Mod, and I don't just mean the original factions, but like the original set of technology, the original units, none of the changes of Alien Crossfire, this is where you would set it at. Personally, I don't really know why you would. I because like Because you really expansion. hate sea lurks. You can disable sea lurks elsewhere in this, actually. Mm. Anyway, um, going through, you can actually set the Thinker AI to only affect a certain number of factions. I don't quite know why you would do that unless if you're just trying to set some of them up to fail. (laughs) Um, Thinker mod affects a lot of things with AI stuff. For instance, this setting will actually make it where instead of the AI always using the exact social engineering choices that, um, that the particular faction encourages, for instance, Yang always using police state, Uh, This will actually set it where they will bias themselves toward what they're supposed to use 
but they're going to be smart about it and use planned when they need growth, for instance. Um, so in ThinkerMod, you'll find that factions use planned way more often than normal. Um, a couple of other things, like being able to balance technology. So this is an interesting thing. One of the things that ThinkerMod does is that it changes the way the AI makes prototypes. For instance, the AI in ThinkerMod will actually make C-unit prototypes, which is something that they should have done a long time ago. That's an awesome unit. You use it all the time. Often, yeah. And it's nice to see the AI be able to do it. Uh, in addition, the AI will start building satellites. Um, this should actually be set lower. I mean, 20 is probably fine, but I think 14 should be the correct option. Um, so what this is is that the AI will encourage building satellites up to this number of each type when they get the respective ability. Uh, 14 is the exact number of bases or population that you would have if you have a hab complex, but not the hab dome, which is going to be what their population will be for a good chunk of the game. Unless they have the ascetic virtues. Yes. And then it would be 16. Or if they're uh, um, the Morganized, they have smaller yep. bases. Or Lol, who has larger bases. Right. So you might want to put that like 18. It was at 20 before, so I guess it's not too bad. Um, 18 would be the highest for pre-dome. So, anyway, um, this is part of the reason why in ThinkerMod you're going to start having problems completing secret projects in time. It's because the AI is actually going to start rushing things. So, this is a default setting for reference. I did not change this. It will rush secret projects with money. Have fun with that. Um, one of the main things that people like to change on ThinkerMod is the base spacing. This is telling the AI, hey, look, you need to have a minimum of three tiles between your bases, which still causes overlap, mind you. Um, you need five to prevent overlap, I think. Is it four? I think it's five. Yeah, yeah it'd be five. To be 100% sure you have no overlap, that is. Four would be a good chunk of overlap. Um, there's also a nearby limit, which is, hey, look, if you're building bases this compact, don't have too many bases all in one spot because they're going to overlap everything constantly. So this prevents that from happening. So it will only have three bases with that base spacing. This is, however, the first line that I had changed. Um, in base, and so what this is, is that this is the number of bases that the map or that the AI will try to build up to before it slows down. And by slows down, I'll explain the next one, um, which is it will also start scaling up when the human player has that many bases. I have it set for 15, which is a reasonable number for the map sizes that I'm playing under, because this limit is the same regardless of how large your map size is. It was set for 50 by default. I found this out the hard way when I was playing my experiment game playing as Cinder Rose, and I encountered an AI that had 37 bases, and I had five. That's the kind of problem I run into. And it was me with five. Imagine how many bases you would have and encounter an AI that's like, oh, by the way, I'm the usurpers, I have 50 bases. You have three. Mm -hmm. Would you like to give us energy credits now? Here, take them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so instead, I have it set for 15, which is a reasonable number. I made this number by figuring out roughly how many bases I have by early mid game. Because, or by mid game, really. Because I don't build bases in a linear order, and the AI will. So it seemed like a reasonable compromise. In our multiplayer game, I think I have it set for eight. But. Yeah, 15, I think, is a much more realistic number than 50. 50 is completely stupid, and I don't understand. Um, we've got a long way to go before any other changes, so I'm just going to quickly go through these. Um, that's the end of the AI changes. We also have games rule changes, which will change how the game works for everybody, not just the AI. Um, a couple of highlights to do here is that they have changed how tech costs work. So in base Mac or Alien Crossfire for that matter, tech costs are entirely based off of 
how many texts you have already researched. So technically, if you want to try to research transcendence as fast as possible, you don't research every tech. You just research the ones required to reach transcendence. It would be quicker. This changes how the tech costs work, where instead of it being based off of how many you've already researched, it's also based off of a few other things, which include the level of the research. So the higher level the research item is, the more the higher the cost is to research it, which is a good way of handling it in my mind. Uh, in addition, the first 16 techs are cheaper. That's to replicate the fact that in base Mac, they're all cheaper because you haven't built any tech yet. Uh, you can also tweak uh, tech stagnation. With the thinker mod, it actually increases it to be double or half research speed instead of being 75% research speed. So just as a heads up for you, since I know you like to play with tech stagnation, it should be fine, though. That affects everybody. Um, this is another thing to point out, is that in Thinker Mod, you will actually have your probe team infiltration expire eventually. And it depends how long that is depends on your probe rating versus the probe rating of the AI. And the same thing will happen in reverse. The AI will have their infiltration expire on you. And potentially very quickly. I've had it happen within a couple of turns, in fact. I really like that feature. I think that should have been in the base game, but it wasn't. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, this one, however, is a huge deal. So in base Mac, your... Well, the way it actually works is that a unit has 10 times a reactor in hit points. So a fission unit will have 10 hit points. A singularity unit will have 40 hit points. What that means is that you have more rounds of combat because you have more hit points to be able to spare when you finish a round of combat. When you do side combat, it ignores the hit points. So what that actually does mechanically is it multiplies the amount of damage that you receive by your reactor power. It makes it where a fission unit or a singularity unit fight the same way against something using Psy. What this does, is it makes everything work that way. The reason being is that when you discover fusion power, that effectively makes all of your units twice as powerful. Um, from us back in the old FFRPG days. Damage capacity. It's damage capacity problems. This makes that go away. The reason why this is in Thinker Mod is that the AI is terrible with realizing this is the case. So you will see the AI suicidally charge you repeatedly with fission units when you've just discovered fusion. And that doesn't work very well. So I understand why this is in here, and I will be playing with it enabled in this game. I can also understand why people wouldn't want to. Um, territory borders are fixed. If you noticed in my previous run, C border, like if you had a C base, it wouldn't give you land borders, and land bases wouldn't give you C borders. This fixes all of that, and also makes it where C bases will have a larger territory around them. This is to just rebalance it. I really don't know what the developers were smoking when they did their territory. It also makes it where if you have two bases right and nearby each other on different factions, when the second base is built in default smack, it will take territory from the first base. This makes it the other way around, where the older base has priority over the newer base for territory. So you don't end up losing tiles in a city radius for no reason. Yeah, I always hated it when other faction would encroach on my bases. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. I don't quite understand why it was set that way. Um, Quickly going over a couple of things. This line will make it where the AIs will automatically, or actually not just the AIs, including the player. Um, if you lose your headquarters, it just gets rebuilt in another base immediately. Uh, it helps the AI more than the player. Um, simple hurry cost is where normally if you hurry a structure or unit or building or whatever, it costs more if you are within the first X number of minerals of that production. So for instance, it's normally 10 minerals if you have normal settings of everything. The first 10 minerals are, if you're trying to hurry production and you only have 10 or fewer minerals in that particular object in the queue, it will cost 
two times or four times as much as normal. What simple hurry cost does is it just eliminates that. Coincidentally, that mineral, the number of minerals it costs is the same as however many minerals are quote unquote free when you change between different types of buildings. Um, eco damage fix. There is a bug in smack where, or bug intended defect, don't know, um, where the AIs won't actually produce eco damage anywhere near as fast as players. What that ends up doing is that the players are almost always the reason for global warming. That's dumb. The AI should be able to do it too. That's what this does. Uh, clean mineral limit. It's This is the default in Smack. It's just that it actually lets you change it. Um, one of the things that this also does, though, is it corrects a bug in Smack where the clean mineral limit in regular Smack will not increase until you've had your first pop. I've mentioned this in my previous run. This fixes that. Uh, and I think there's actually a setting to toggle that a little bit later. But the clean mineral limit will actually increase even if you haven't had your first pop yet, which is nice. Because otherwise, all of your tree farms are useless. Or not tree farms, um, Sundari Preserves. Building it before your first pop is just wasting money. These are the settings where you can finally get rid of the stupid sea lurks. It's that line right there. <laughs> You can also disable fungal clower towers. You can disable battle ogres. I don't really know why. And you can disable spore launchers. Um, these are the various repair rates, and I have actually changed these because they did a dumb. So what repair rates are indicating is how fast units heal. And one of the things that they changed was the fact that in Thinker Mod, units do not heal in friendly territory outside of bases at all yeah that's them yep you, you should be able to do field repairs exactly so i re-enabled it uh this is set the same way as default smack um otherwise it was only allowing you to repair inside of cities and also repair native units in fungus which speaking of the other setting that i changed is the nano factory setting um, what they did for Thinker Mod is that they made it where when you build the nano factory, you now repaired at the rate that you normally did in base smack outside of cities, mm -hmm. which is dumb. So I set it back to somewhere in between. So it's not going to repair every unit instantly like nano factory does. It repairs to 50%. Mm -hmm. So at maximum, you have two turns to fully repair. I think that's a reasonable compromise. Um, otherwise, all of these are basically the same as default smack. The only difference is you can now change it. So things like how much collateral damage you do when you destroy a unit. You can theoretically do 127 damage to every unit in that tile. Which would destroy everything. I don't know why the number goes up that high. Things can't have more than 40 hit points. Maybe it's for mod purposes? Mm. Mm. Anyway, all of these are just base smack stuff that you can change. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing that's different from base smack until you go down to... Eliminate getting money for killing native life. Yep, that is one of them. Uh, that's this one right here. Why would you do that? If you're playing as a non-eco faction and you don't want the eco faction to get a lot of free money. I guess. But as we're seeing in my current game, it looks like the AI has started doing farming. So that's balanced. The biggest change, however, that I made for Thinker Mod is in the map generator options. Namely, I'm not using the stupid Thinker Mod map generator. So this is something that completely screwed up, screwed up my first game playing Thinker Mod. The Thinker Mod map generator heavily leans port toward Pangea maps. They don't explain this at all, by the way. I only found out when I was reading the INI file. And researching online, asking people WTF. Um, the map generator does a bunch of other things as well. Like, for instance, the fact that it will only do 70% on sea level at the highest level. Regardless of the fact that it says 70 to 90, it's always 70. 
it basically overrides everything that you tell the custom map options for. I really dislike these changes. They're obnoxious. There's no real good reason for it. The creators of Thinkermod claim it's because the AI is much better on a Pangea. I've seen evidence that it's fine on an island hopping map. So I just told it no. I have not made any other changes to this file. So it's just window size for... Oh. Yeah. The the landmarks. Yep. What's the canyon? The one you have set to zero. Uh, so this is a landmark that's actually disabled in Alien Crossfire. Entirely. It's on Map of Planet. I don't remember it, but I haven't played Map of, Pla of Planet in yeah. so long. So this is actually basically what it is in Alien Crossfire by default. The main difference is, is that their map generator will make sure that all of them are there other than canyon can you set one of them to two and there'd be two of them on the map i don't know i haven't played around with a map generator that much it's possible we've already seen can three you... mount planet things hmm? can you just two unity crashes oh no <laughs> no um i mean i can always later on test it out in a small map type of thing where it'd be very obvious. Mm -hmm. Two borehole clusters and they're right next to each other. Or on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a solid chunk of boreholes. Yes. But anyway, um, these are the changes that I've made. Um, I think rather than making this a part of the same video, I'm actually going to make this a separate video. So the, you've probably been linked to this from the um, first video on YouTube. So if so, Hi. Or you're su subscribed and get notified for every video post. But you don't get notified if I make it hidden. Mm. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. The other thing that I wanted to briefly, very briefly mention is this section right down here at the bottom. Um, so this is for like changes that you make to the game itself that don't really fit anywhere else. Like, for instance, you can give every AI two free formers at the start of the game or give the AI satellites at the start, it's to make it where you can give the AI bigger bonuses. But this last part here is really fascinating. This section is actually, when you start a new game and you tell it, I wanna play a random faction, it will skip the um, Cult of Planet, the Caretakers, and the Usurpers in the random order. This is apparently the way it's set in Alien Crossfire, and I never knew about it until I like read through the INI file. I find that fascinating. Basically, if you tell it complete random, it'll skip any faction that you don't start on the first mission year. And then you can even add in custom factions here as well. Okay, that's it. Just wanted to mention that. Bye! Game? Game? I mean, it's probably working to create a random planet. Yeah. I remember it taking a while for our game, too. If, but... we, if we shut up during this part, you can just cut it out in editing. Yeah, but that requires me to edit things. <laughs> <laughs> um, game? Hello? There we go. Up. Hey, Minnie. Or Hermione. I've already forgotten how she says it. The disastrous space battle above the skies of planet have ended. I know it says has, I don't care. And the shattered rem remnants of your flagship are preparing to land on the surface. Your only comfort is that the usurper vessel was destroyed as well. But you can look forward to your facing your nemesis somewhere on the vastness of planet. You now shape your, the destiny of the caretaker faction, which has just made Planetfall! So yeah, it's a slightly different message than before. Okay, this time the Unity survey does work, so maybe that was a multiplayer thing. Hey, that looks good. Let's base there. Honestly, that spot actually looks better, but because mm -hmm. that's dry, mm -hmm. and given that this is the rainy side, that means that this is going to be the dry side. Yeah. So these spots are going to suck, but I don't want to wait an extra turn. All right, this is Decision Manifold. Um, I always let it build a scout patrol to start... 
Uh, Although I could just tell it to do formers. Yeah, I guess in this case, just formers. Um, just queue up a couple of things for now. So the usurpers start with significantly more, or not usurpers, um, both the usurpers and the caretakers, the progenitor races, there we go. Uh, they start with significantly more units than normal, but you will notice that the mission year is now 2106 instead of um, 2100 or 2101. That's because they start five years later. Um, fun fact, they're not the only ones that do uh, the planet cult also start five years later. It's a hidden thing that the game never tells you about. Anyway, um, I just realized that I need to do something really fast, so I'm going to pause the video recording and I'll be right back. And we're back. Sorry, I just needed to compress and get rid of some older saves, because otherwise this was going to get really confusing fast. Um, let's go ahead and start exploring. Helps if the window is open and numlock is off. We are going to keep the Battle Ogre here for now. Nah, I'm just going to move the Battle Ogre as well. And we have a couple of colonies. Um, so this is going to be the dry side, so I'm not going to want to colonize here to start, most likely. And there's a river here. So here would might not be a bad spot to colonize, like somewhere along mm -hmm. this coast. As long as it's not rocky or full of fungus. Yep. And the next one I probably want to send further down this way. I can see, sort of see that there's a little bit of a ridge here, here, and here. But I'm not seeing anything obvious like, hey, look, here's the crater or Fullest Ridge or anything like that. I don't even think that's Mount Planet. That's actually... That's definitely... That, that's the, the desert. That's the desert. That's a river in it, though. That's nice. Yeah, it actually is. Um, Too bad you can't build a boulder. <laughs> wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> We're not playing as the touch. <laughs> Sorry, I just really like boulders. Polters are an excellent, excellent thing. All right. Um, let's go ahead and go with social psych so we can try to get secrets of the human brain. It's unlikely that we're going to succeed in this case. Oh, hey, look. Another river. We're good on water at this point. Turn complete. Uh, zoom in a little bit. By the way, do I have... Yes, I do have scrolling zoom. Um, that was an issue with our Thinker game. Where we would just randomly have it. <laughs> randomly, one of us would ha move units by using the scroll wheel instead of zooming. And it was very annoying. Mm -hmm. So, it looks like these are not fungus. Or, this might be. You can actually tell by the mm -hmm. edge. I think this is fungus and this isn't. And in any case, we do not want a colony pet while going into fungus. No. It was mostly to see if this is also fungus, then I would just be walking around that side. But I'm going to walk around this way instead. You would have overlap if you put the base there, though. Yeah. I'm okay with a little bit of overlap. I am not. It is something I've learned to accept, I should say. I can accept one square of overlap, but only if that means I get bonus resources. Mm -hmm. Whereas here would be two squares of overlap, and that's not that bad in my mind. I'd prefer here over here. Yeah. Damn it. At least I have a defense bonus. And they can't reach my home base on one turn. Okay. This tells me that we don't have anybody super close to us. Because that is one, two, three, four, five tiles away diagonally. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles straight up. I don't think we have anybody bordering us. Mm. That's good. Turn complete. That's rocky, isn't it? No. No, it's rolling. Okay. So this would not be that bad of a spot. Um, this might be a better spot. Hmm. 
Maybe I'll just build there. Yay. Production complete. Right, you mentioned that mine worms at start of game fight a half strength. Yep. For the first 15 turns by default. I would follow the river because then you get to move again, possibly. Yeah, that is a good point. Although, if I was going to build here, then just moving straight there would have made more sense. Okay. So... Here's the thing about building right now. Um, this spot actually makes sense for me to improve. This spot doesn't. Because I can't get more than two nutrients on a square right now without a nutrient resource. I would probably go for the mineral resource. Yeah, but that has fungus on it. It's going to take me more turns to improve. Yeah, that's also a good point. So I'd like to have something while I'm improving it. And this is high up enough where I think I would prefer solar panels, especially at the start. I don't think I ever fully realized the importance of energy. Mm. It just... Hey, nice. You can get some extra energy, but... Yes! <laughs> yes, clone my ogres! Save. Ooh. Ooh. The unity crash. That means we can get a chopper. And get it close enough where I can get it back without yes. losing it. Excellent. Absolutely perfect. No notes. Money. Home hearth is our second base. And at this point, I think I need to start using the Q feature. So something to note when it comes to the thinkers mod is that the first template slot is something that gets built automatically in every base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start loading up what I want my Q to be, which is not going to be much right now. It's just going to be Scout Patrol, then Formers, then Network Node, then Formers again. You build way more Formers than I do. And I always need more Formers. And that might be why. And then I am going to hit OK. Right click. Save to template. So the first template slot is the one that gets sent to every time. So this is going to be... Nope. New base. And then I'm going to delete the scout patrol because I don't actually need two of them at the start. <laughs> so now the next base that I build will have that set up in the queue by default, which is nice. I don't want to put my battle ogre through fungus right now. Where do I want to build this? Maybe down here? Or over here? Hmm. Or over here? Yeah, there, probably. I guess I'm getting a spore launcher as my first unit. Turn. Could have been worse. Production complete. And it's independent at least. But let's start exploring using the spore launcher. Okay, maybe I don't want a base here with how much fungus there is here. Um, something to note is that you'll see me go on to rivers quite a bit. Uh, that's just the way I like to do things. Hmm. Actually, I take that back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. There is somebody over here. That's a smaller base radius than this one. I think there's another faction right here. Let's go say hi to them. Oh, that's what this unit's going to do. Oops. Next turn. Yeah. Next turn, not this turn. Turn complete. 
Unfortunately, we can't set any politics or anything like that right now. But I'd like to speed things up a little bit. Mining laser. Scout chopper. Only six movement. And it's not in but independent. Oh crap, you're right. Oh, that sucks. Well, it's good to have to take out mine worms near your city. Yeah, but neither is the Unity mining laser. Mm. Which means that I'm at minus one production here. That's obnoxious. We can always send the chopper over to the other base and make that its home. Yeah, I may end up doing that. Okay, so this area would be good if it weren't for all the fungus. Why did I tell you to move there? I don't know. Just using the trackball at the moment makes it a little easier for me to control when there's a second person to my left. I don't know why I think that, but I do. This area seems nice, though. I may want to just throw a base down here before I realize that there's another AI. Mm -hmm. Turn complete. Request confirmation. So one of the features of thinkers is when you make a part and you one, you see the minimum cost to hurry something. So you, I no longer have to calculate it constantly. And two, when you go to make partial payment, that's the default. I love that feature. Yes. Now we're counting how many minerals you need. And mm -hmm. ugh. I'm not all that fond of math. I mean, I'm fine with math. It's just I don't need to use the math. You have to tell me. Actually, it just dawned on me. I could just look at the graphs and yeah. OBS. Okay. So we have built our first network node. Uh, in this case, for our bases, we get recycling tanks for free. So that's going to be the thing that you don't hear this game. No quote from Yang. Is every citizen's duty. Final duty. Final, final duty. To go into the tanks and become one with the people. All right, we get to see the sights of everybody else. There isn't another person nearby. Huh, I wonder why. Because it's the usurpers. Oh, crap, you're probably right. So Alpha Prime is sharing our same continent, but they're pretty far away. Across the way from Alpha Prime is Data Decentral. And also nearby there are the pirates. And the free drones have their own mega continent. No, it's actually shared with um, Cinder Rose. So there's a couple of land masses that are completely clear of people, unless if the usurpers are there. I really hope I'm not sharing with the usurpers. This is going to end very poorly. Oh, actually, it probably won't because I have two battle ogres right now. <laughs> but they're on the wrong side. I should probably move the battle ogres around. At least one of them. Yeah. Turn complete. Indigenous life form. Capture? Yay. That's a much better capture. Life form. Capture? No. Mmm, that's equal odds. You're moving back and standing. You stand a goodly distance, or at a goodly distance, examining the strange formation through a resonance gathering device cobbled together by one of the techs. It's quite serviceable, and you're able to see the distant object as though you're a few feet away. It looks like a heat rash on the skin of Manifold 6, you say, and gathered and those gathered around you alter their resonance to show humor. What is it? The xenobiologist pulls back the flaps of his neck and alters stiffly. 
We don't know, leader. There are no reports of these objects in the manifold files handed to, down to us by, from the original creators. These seem to be something new. You clack your mandibles like a baby as you lower the gathering device. That's bad. Very bad. The presence of the offworlders has caused this, hasn't it? The biologist shakes his neck again in assent. Somehow, the latent intellect of Manifold 6 has created these... towers. In response to irritations caused by the ecological ravages of the offworlders. This is like the tenth turn of the game or something. <laughs> and, I hesitate to alter, our own presence as well. They generate the fungus at an increased rate, and may be a conduit for mindworm and spore runner activity. Those tendrils you see, here he waves one arm, have a reach of several hundred yards. It's dangerous to get too close to this thing. You bug out you bug your eyes in a laugh as you alter his words to show humor. Oh, then I was right the first time. It is a giant heat rash. You only wish it was as funny as it resonated. The fact is, unchecked, these things would take over the manifold. Would that bring the flowering? Or would it bring instead another destruction, like that of Tau Ceti? Keep an eye on it, you say. We'll destroy it if we have to. It doesn't destroy us first, you think, but dare not say. Hmm? Yes, Susan? Do you want to be on camera? And the upgrade station monolith has upgraded our spore launcher. Um, yes, that's what the monoliths are. They're upgrade stations for the... Upgrade and repair stations. Yes. I've captured another mindworm. You know, this was supposed to be a 25% chance. Just saying. Okay. You're going to go there. Control H so I actually have any chance of building anything. And... We're going to forest that. The reports of attacks and deaths are quite disturbing. How can this be, you alter? Turning to the xenobiologist. None of our records show such hostility from the native life forms in this era of the beginnings of the experiment. The current records do not lie, though, she counters. The mindworms and spore launchers are definitely out to kill us. In the past... Mm, the hum of the thought hangs for a while, and you prompt gently. In the past? Yes, leader. The biologist seems very unhappy. In the past, we were the gardeners. We were there only to tend and then to leave. Now we're here to live. Manifold 6, the whole planet, doesn't like that. It cares not for our politics. It only, it just doesn't like us being here. You realize the implications you alter, feeling but showing a touch of fear. But not showing. Or not showing a touch of fear. We are at the mercy of an entire world. It's not intelligent enough to negotiate with. It will simply try to kill us. Yes, leader. The biologist alters. And truly, there's nothing whatsoever that you can do that you're not already doing. You put the problem from your... Uh, no, you put the problem from your brain and stride from the room. <laughs> okay. And time to attack. Yay, larval mass. Really? Whatever. And that mine more is independent. Yep. Uh, let's see. We have less than 2 to 2 odds. So it's 2.47 to 3.0. So we're going to lose this. Probably. Yes. So let's not do that. And just continue on. Pod recovered. The crude human pot has malfunctioned and unleashed an earthquake. Typical. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> Unfortunately, that actually ruined the geography I was looking for, but that's fine. Yeah. Earthquakes are one of the main reasons why I tend to always save before investigating a pod. Oh, right. It's not a prototype unit, so I don't have the visibility. Also, our random character for the day is a capital Y. <laughs> Seriously? Well, that's obnoxious. Fine, I'm going to kill you right back. Oh, 
free network node. I'm okay with this. Strat, I was hoping for a second resource of some variety. Well, we have social psych at least. And let's go for Secrets of the Human Brain in yes. the vain hope that we get it. Indigenous life form. Terraform complete. Turn complete. Indigenous life form. Of course not. That would be too easy. Yeah, I think down here somewhere is probably the best spot for the base. Here mm -hmm. is where I'm thinking. Because usually you want to be three squares away from an energy... Or from a resource, specifically. Uh, let's see. Hold on a moment. Okay, sorry, we have somebody grocery shopping for us right now, so it's easier to discuss it when we're muted. Um, we have Faction Dominance chart right now. The Usurpers are having a great game. <laughs> As they are currently winning in military population, wealth, and overall. Svensgard's got tech, and Domai has territory. Okay, we need to expand faster. Yeah. We only have two bases. That's not a lot. No, it's not. Um, I am going to have a purring net former. I'm going to just queuing up colony pods everywhere. Insufficient energy. I can the only former. do one. Yeah. It's an awkward spot. Request confirmation. Yeah, we don't quite have enough money for the other one. Because so I think we needed 39. Insufficient energy. Yeah, we needed 39 and we have 33. So we can do it next turn. Turn complete. Production complete. Indigenous life form. All right, so we have at least some additional food coming. Not that they're using the square at all, because they need the resources right now. Um, let's head down sure. here and start Thank foresting, you. I suppose. Data pod recovered. We have gained a new tech. That tech is industrial base. Okay. And consume they Not will particularly a tech that I needed right now. Generation, then buy some future. But hey, free tech. This forgotten yep. future seek to deny us our birthright. None, I say. Let us take what is ours, mm -hmm. chew and eat our fill. CEO Nwabude K. Morgan, The Ethics of Greed. It's a shame that this one is not on camera. He's being so cute. Yes, he's in my lap for reference. He's right here. Mm -hmm. You gonna come up and say hi? Nope. Um, I need to pause again because a couple more food refund things just came through. One moment. All right. That should be the last interruption. The person who's shopping is checking out now. Um, one thing I don't like about the Unity survey is that it's really hard for me to, at a glance, tell which areas haven't been scouted. Like, I know that this area hasn't, but it's hard for me to see that at a quick glance. And, like, for instance, there's a little bit over here that hasn't been scouted, and I can't easily tell. It looks very similar to there's nothing there. Yeah. Even though that's not the case. No. I mean, at least I'm getting money. Our mindworm-based economy uh, is... Wait, wait. Uh, redistribute for resources first. You have a force now. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Request confirmation. But I think I'm going to be building here. Consonants? 
Isn't that one of the standard names? I think it might be. Wait, do I even have the non-standard names enabled right now? Yes, I do. Okay. So as you can see, it automatically populated my default queue. I am actually going to be appending this though. There we go. So basically just adding in a colony pod and rec commons. And yes, my colony pod is that early in my queue. <laughs> I and I am still banking on getting um, Virtual World. Yes, I know I had just sent out that ship, but I'm going to send it out a little bit further this time. Okay. Um, still want to solar that, but I need resources. I'm doing it anyway. Turn Remove the fungus. I think I'm just going to plant a mine there for the time being rather than flattening it. Mm -hmm. Because that should be a pretty decent spot. Production complete. Yeah. Go ahead and save because I'm going through fungus territory, which I don't like doing with battle ogres. Um, for reference, a battle ogre cannot be healed. Uh, technically, I think there's a glitch way of actually healing them, but I don't remember how off the top of my head. Turn complete. Well, it looks like that we've reached roughly where... Um, Mar is by virtue of us building more bases. And Cha Don has the most money. So he's been chomping down on some mindworms. Doing some mindworm farming. <laughs> yep. And Svensgard still has tech. The reason why Svensgard has tech most likely is because Svensgard's in the ocean. So all of those pods that are in the ocean are Svensgard's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello there, mindworm. Care to join me? No? Then die! Please don't kill me. Thank you. <laughs> I think that Sky Scout Patrol needs to head out to the yep. repair monolith. I agree. Join me? No. Join me? Yes. Ooh. Ah, the ruins! You're going to be red fungus. You're, or not fungus, forest. You're going to be red forest. Do I No. Do I No. That's right. I wanted that one on the other side in case of they are over there. Although now I'm starting to wonder if they are. I should have seen somebody by now if they were. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, because they've sprawled a certain amount. Yeah. They had territory as their main area for a while. So they should have at least two bases. I should have seen something by now. So they're not there. Yeah. Turn complete. So I wonder why it's weirdly shaped on the radii. You're going to sleep. Energy resources. Uh, crude robot pod that found on energy resources. That sounds great. Upgrade monolith. Thank you. I would <sighs> plop down a sensor on that one square outside of base radius. But that's just me. I love building sensors. I want to see what's Fresh. happening on <laughs> every square on planet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whereas I tend to go, that takes up valuable time that I could be using terraforming. 
Uh, looks like our order is on its way and delivery estimate is in about nine minutes. Okay, we will pause when that happens, obviously. Yep. We could always end early, actually. That's not too far off. Mm. Terraform complete. Uh, nope. I have a better than 50-50 shot. Okay. Well, if you want to. Let's try it. I'm gonna die. Or not. Success! Nice. Money. You thought it's Hermione? No, it's her money. <laughs> complete. Well, speaking of money, it's time to spend more. Growth is so slow right now. I know I was just playing a high growth faction running planned, but it feels slow. We need, we need democracy. Yeah, I'm actually going to hurry decision manifolds. The reason why I'm choosing this one is because home health, home hearth will actually reach three population before the colony gets popped out. So that would actually be to the base's advantage. This one has no prayer of reaching it in time. I'm just going to, oh. Yeah, I'm just going to hurry it. Request confirmation. Production complete. And I am out of minerals now. For reference. Yeah, un until the colony pod is used. Yep. Initiated. Or until it grows in three turns. Yeah, then it'll probably start. Yep. So that's why I'm starting the weather paradigm, even though I have no chance of actually finishing it. Um, Here looks like an excellent spot, assuming that it's not covered in fungus. You could always send one of the terraformers along. Yeah, that's true. And I will eventually. Terraform complete. I just hit space to end the turn. It oh, will... does it actually do that? Yeah. It, oh, I it, did it not know that. Turn if you complete. just stop, hmm? stay there. I would have done that if I had known. See, I'm still learning things about the game. Ooh, Unity River. Hopefully you're actually independent. You yes. are good. So the Great Dunes is a landscape area that is always arid. It's, which is how you end up with a river arid location. <laughs> um, condensers will actually fix this for reference. Or you just forest it and not care. Which is frequently what I do. Indigenous life forms. You were not joining my party? Ooh, I almost died. That was close. Yep. Ooh, that mm. area looks nice for base. Is, I'm seeing a lot of rainy area. Because that's on the other side of the um, rain shadow. Um, have a look at resources. I mean, what the base is currently using. Oh. It's currently over there, which is a rocky raised terrain. Or rocky rainy spot on a river. That doesn't look rocky to me. Or not rocking, rolling. Yeah. The other R word. Um, honestly, what I need is a sea colony thing. Sea former. Yeah. Thank you. So, go there. You're, ugh, everything's rocky. Terraform complete. Nope, that's not where I wanted to go. That's where I wanted to go. To ride the river down. It'll be faster. Heal up. Speaking of riding the river down. Of course. So I don't know if you've noticed, but if you encounter an alien unit with an alien unit, they won't attack you. I've noticed that. Ah. You're sleeping for a while. Mineral 
resources. Nice. <laughs> I mean, the ideal spot would be here if it weren't rocky. You can always send in the... No, you can't because you don't have the weather part on. Or can you terraform level? Yeah, you from, can terraform from the... level at the start. Okay, it was boreholes, condensers... Raise and lower. Raise and lower, right? Yeah. I believe you can terraform. Okay. Um, let's see. That will be under... Uh, terraforming. So that one requires environmental econ. That requires none. Okay. Yep. But I have to send a former out there. And, that and that's takes... a lot of turns without a former. Mm. A lot of turns the former could do other useful work. Yes. But I care a lot more about perfect base placement than you do. Right. Which... Whereas I care more about I want formers done faster. Which is why I am bad at sprawling. And why I'm very, very good at sprawling. Yep, that's fine. 447, so in nine minutes. Hmm. It's rocking, okay. That's very useful to do when you're attacking a base that is built inside the yes. ruins. You just stand there, you're healed, attack again. Okay, I think I want to go past the ruins this time this way. Letting it take damage, then go out a little bit more, then head back. Oh, that area looks so good. Yeah. I need to expand faster. Mm hmm. Before someone else takes it. Yes, although it currently looks like I'm by myself on this continent. That would be nice. It would be. Ooh, that was a little close. Turn complete. Stop following me. You don't want to join me. Star Harmony. That's definitely not a default base name. Yep, that looks good. Free network node, always handy. Ah, uh, no. You're sleeping. What are your odds? Four to three? I th I like those odds. I mean, I nearly died, but I generally like those odds. Production complete. All right, we have our second colony pod out of those. Mineral situation is awful. That is not helping. But at the same time, I really need the everything. Mm -hmm. You know what? You're just going to stay in pod duty for a bit. Production complete. Although, you should... Okay, nope. I don't actually have better spots for it. Um, Here would get two energy resources and have two tiles of overlap. Well, it's your game. You can do that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, other options would include... No, that would not actually reach. Well, that's still not a bad base spot, just it wouldn't reach. Um, we do have coastal bases. How about there? Over here would be quite nice. You can get that mineral resource and the upgrade monolith. Yeah, and the upgrade monolith right now is really helpful. Really, I want over here, because that's three mineral resources and potentially whatever's here. But I don't have to get that right now. The problem is going through all the fungus. Mm-hmm. Well, you have a scout patrol nearby that can help escort. Yeah, that's a good point. And scout patrol's not doing anything else. Speaking of scout patrol not doing things, thank you. I would just wait a few turns. Yep. So for reference, since I didn't explain this before, when you sleep in a tile, 
it will wait until fully healed if it's partially damaged. Um, which, for a normal unit, it can only heal up to 80%, but that's exactly where I would want a rover to heal up to. I don't think I risk it. I wouldn't do it. So the reason why we're hesitating about it is, once more, battle ogres can't be repaired. I mean, they're still useful even when they're heavily damaged, sure. just because they act as police units. But it's better to use them wisely. Oh, hey, look, more fungus. Right, you're heading down. You're heading back now that you've discovered that you have more resources than you thought. You're sleeping. You didn't actually update what resources that base is using. It's, it probably won't it's use it. It's not going anyway. to use it. All of its good resources are in yeah. fungus is the problem. Well, that's just dry. That's going to end up being a forest square for sure. Um, okay, upgrade monolith. There are only two we actually did manage to get secrets of the human brain first. That's impressive. So we get our free tech. I am going to immediately choose Centauri Empathy because it's the most expensive tech that's on this list. And green is very helpful for us. Yes. Although the penalty to growth right now is going to suck. But there's no democracy available to us right now, and that would be the other one I would go for. Observe the race week. Or planned. So carefully to the fungal beings. Just to let... See, by going green, that we're actually going to increase our rate of research right now. Why because... does our upheaval cost 48 credits instead of 24? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a thinker difficulty increase? Anyway, um... I have no idea what it's based on. I thought it's just a flat number. Well... I've seen it be different numbers. Well, it's different numbers when you do more than one at a time. Right. Maybe it's based on how many bases you have. I don't think so, because it's... Like, in the game that we're playing, it's still 24 for me. Anyway, it's still totally worth doing. There's planned. Damn it. We're going democracy first, though. Because we need to make up for that growth penalty at the moment. Okay, um... I'm thinking that this mindworm might need to start playing around in fungus for a bit. But we still have more exploration to do, so I suppose I can continue doing that. Um, you're going to take for freaking ever. Lose three minerals by doing that? Mm. I really want the weather paradigm, but I'm so mineral poor right now. And mostly due to the fact that I have some extra units that are sitting around not doing anything. See, that's why I don't build so many formers, because I absolutely hate having my minerals decreased by yeah. units. It's just that I tend to forget in late game when you have hundreds of minerals and it's all crazy. <laughs> that it's really not worth it to no, it's have not. clean reactor on everything when... Yeah. It's like, minus 10 minerals doesn't really do anything when you're making 150. No, not really. So Mars got military, pop, wealth, and overall. Domai has territory now, and Tech is still Svensgard. Uh, usurpers seem to have increased a little bit. I really wish you could zoom in on this more. Indigenous life forms. Really? Indigenous life Are you forms. kidding me? You're not going anywhere. Apparently not. At least I'm going to upgrade. Well, now that it's using this, it's at least going much faster. I need a hell of a lot more money, though. Road. Um... I do believe that I'm actually somewhat tempted to disband the Unity Scout Rover. Scout Chopper, you mean? Or Scout Chopper. 
Maybe send it to kill that fungus tower. If it survives... It's not it... going to survive. It's a SAM unit. You don't get the uh, ground attack penalty on Psy Combat. Well, that's true. What are your odds? Well, it's got better than average odds, but it's going to die the moment it's done anyway. Yeah, because it's not going to be able to return before right. it crashes. Unless if I somehow just win. By a lot. Like that. Mm-hmm. It lived. I guess it's going to live another day. I guess. Oh, that's right. Aki's over here. Turn complete. I'm not going anywhere. Our food has arrived. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and stop this here. Um, Thank well, you I'm for watching. I'm just going to finish up the episode. Uh, I'm going to go. Okay. It's just drop off. Okay. Uh, um, just finishing the turn. That's it. It's okay. I'm just finishing the turn. I don't think anyone is going to steal the groceries off our. Oh, hey, look, another clone yeah! cloaker. <laughs> <laughs> our military is ridiculous at this early in the game. How close is Aki from here? Maybe I could just stomp her into the ground now. Actually, I probably could. Not mm -hmm. the worst idea. And she might have some tanks you don't have. Yeah, you that know what? You can steal when you conquer bases. We're gonna do that as our plan. Free colony pod. Complete. It's not exactly what I wanted. Although and I am high enough population, that's not that big of a deal. So we're gonna go ahead and save this here. Hope you've enjoyed this internet, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.